All right, hello everybody. This is a module 10 video. There's really nothing new in this module. It's just more practice and you're also gonna have to deal with springs. So take a look at this question here. An object moving uphill at decreasing speed has, it has gravitational potential energy and it has kinetic energy. Okay, it's moving and it's going uphill. So since it's moving, it has kinetic energy, and since it's at some height, it has gravitational potential energy. All right. So it's just a pretend uh, Kahoot. There are not any real players, and you can't join in. Um, but please answer along at home. Which of the following forces can do work on an object? All of the above. Okay, friction usually does negative work, but it actually could do positive work as well. But either way, can do work. Uh, applied force, push a couch across the, the floor. You do, you are applying the force, you're doing work on the couch. Um, a normal force often does not do work, but get into an elevator, just as one example, get into an elevator, and whether you go up or down, the normal force from the floor is going to do work on you. Stationary box is pushed, it slides across a level floor and comes to a stop. What is the total work done on the box? Ooh, all right. If you pause this video and look at your seven term equation, you should be able to figure this out. You probably won't be able to figure it out in nine seconds. So go ahead and hit that pause button. All right, the answer is zero. So if you looked at that seven term equation and if you drew out a diagram, you would have seen that there was no gravitational potential energy, no spring energy, no kinetic energy at the beginning. And at the end, there was no spring energy, no gravitational potential energy and no kinetic energy. So you had zero plus zero plus zero plus work by non-conservative forces equals zero plus zero plus zero. So solving that equation, you would get work equals zero. And there you have it. If you want a further explanation for this or any of the other questions in this Kahoot, please contact me. I would be happy to go over them with you. All right, next. So we're gonna score, still zero. All right. What's the best angle for a force to act to remove energy from this system? All right. Oh, we got an answer this time. All right, way to go, energy. Okay, so 180 degrees. Okay, the biggest um, negative value of cosine of any angle is negative one. Cosine of 180 is negative one. Um, if you had other angles between 91 and 269, or really 90 and 270, um, it would be a negative, cosine of that angle would be a negative value, but it would be less than one. All right, ooh, true or false. Gravity is a non-conservative force. Okay, plenty of time to answer this one. Oh, all right. So, did you get that one right? That was false, because gravity is a conservative force. All right, make sure you got that. Next up, we got two more questions to go. Volleyball's hit at a 30 degree angle at its peak. The ball has, which kind of energy? I'll let this clock run all the way. Give you as much time as possible. Right, it has both kinetic energy because it's still moving in the x direction and it has gravitational potential energy because it's higher than, well, whatever you would pick the ground level or the initial starting point um, would be where gravitational potential energy is zero. It's certainly higher than that. Okay, last question. A box is sliding down a ramp angled 40 degrees from horizontal. Calculate the work done by friction. 
use an angle of, and this is a great time to pause this video, draw a work diagram. Okay, when you're asked about work, draw a work diagram. Go ahead and pause it before you see the answer, quick. All right, and the correct answer was 180 degrees. Just because you see an angle in the problem, don't be so quick to grab that angle and use it for anything and everything. If you drew a work diagram, you would have drawn a displacement arrow down the slope. You would have drawn a friction arrow up the slope and they would have been 180 degrees apart, okay? And actually you might've wanted to start with a free body diagram and then move on to the work diagram. All right, so this uh, particular module, it is more of the same. Like I said, we're using this equation and this equation splits out into these seven terms. In module nine, we didn't have to worry about the spring, potential energy, initial or final. Now we are up to all seven terms. And remember, we can also write it this way. Either form, whatever you like, just remember that they're really the same meaning. If you know, and or you just look on your equation sheet, you can see these. And that's what connects this seven term equation with this one. Looks complicated, gets easier the more you use it. All right, that's it for this module uh, 10 video. Um, so good luck and please come see me if you have any questions about anything. I look forward to helping you.